Good morning. It's quite early to be doing this, but I had a thought which I wanted to share with you relating to the markets yesterday. So, um, one of the things I um, was previous, well, I still am interested in, was I very much looked into equities and kind of order flow uh, and how orders were executed within the market. So, that's something I actually spent quite a while looking at. So, you know, when you go down that road, you start finding things like um, level two, and this is kind of what's going on you know actually at the market so you can see all the bid and ask prices so this is the guy that's kind of sitting there actually um taking the other side of your trade actually in the market so this guy's like a, a market maker or a specialist in the us um again i don't know how much this has changed with electronic trading but the principle will be the same so there'd literally be a guy there that would try and you know offer you one price for buying your stock and another price for selling you stock right so actually bid and ask going on there so anyway, the, the, this software you can buy, and I used to learn quite a lot, of, you know, tried to learn a lot about it and stuff, but it's mainly more used for uh, intraday trading, really, which isn't what we're into. And also, I believe it's mainly around equities. But anyway, my point, the point I was making is that around this is that you've got this bid and ask price, okay? And, and effectively, someone's quoting that price, and that guy that's quoting that price, whether it be your broker or a market maker or whatever, um, wants to make money and the, the real way he wants to make money is effectively out of you the customer which is um, you know in equities it's pretty much the public so this guy is setting his prices um, you know to try and get you to buy and sell now one of the things which I um, um, a, a term I heard was a was a tree tree shake and I got that reading a book called the naked trader by Robbie Burns I think it is again this is a while ago when I was looking more into equities but it's basically the principle of a tree shake is that a guy, you know, the guy that's doing all the share dealing, you know, the market maker will get a big order in, say it's from a, a pension fund or something. So he gets an order for um, 10,000 shares, um, but he can't fulfill that order unless he's got the shares. So what he'll do is he'll lower the prices on those shares um, to get up to shake other people out basically so it'll, it, it's, so people will get scared and then sell him the shares and then he can flog them on to fill to fill the order and then inevitably the price goes up so what you've got happening there you know if you think about that on a chart you've actually got the market looking like it's going down um and that's exactly what it's designed to do it's designed to scare the public or the people with the shares into selling them thinking oh god i better get out of here um and then the, and then the market goes the other way um so this this is this is happening all the time on kind of intraday scale. I guess it probably happens on on a bigger scale as well. Now the reason I wanted to mention it was because I think yesterday, uh, sorry, not too many charts. I think yesterday would, could be an example of where that happened. Okay, on the, on now I, again, this isn't directly stocks. This is indices, and presumably this is through an ETF. But if you look at yesterday's chart, what happened was the market opened right at the peak of the day, effectively. Okay, so it gapped up opened there and then all we had was a day of selling so it makes sense to me that um you know if that's if those kind of tree shaking and this, this, so you can obviously tree shake the other way around as well so if they think the market's going to go down they'll set the prices higher and probably not called a tree shake but anyway i think what i'm getting at is that um you have to be careful about just price action alone it's particularly on the on the kind of um lower time scales and this is why it makes day trading you know a little bit a little bit more a little bit harder is because you're, you're working against that kind of price action and obviously you've got then got the high frequency guys in there as well which are probably doing even more exciting stuff but it's just really to point out that you know quite often if i see something like an indice or a share gap up say then it's almost a sign to me that the market might actually be wanting to go down i mean obviously that's not a hard fast rule and you don't want to necessarily trade off that although loads of stock guys do you don't want to just trade off that but you know if it's go down to like something like a two hour chart here so the market opened this is the uk 100 opened here effectively and all we had was a sell-off so it's a big jump and went down and that's kind of the sort of thing that i try and bear in mind with the indices um so obviously you can start to try and use that to, to your advantage if you want to. I mean, I used to actually trade it, but I, I don't now because I, I just say I'm just trying to get a bit of a trend. But they, these are the kind of things which are going on in the intraday which make it more risky. Um, another takeaway I've got written down there is is, is dumb money. So the um, yeah, I mean th this is this is where the world of finance is a bit of a bitch because everyone is actually trying to get your money off you, um, and yeah, they they. Um, 
what it's basically dumb money hour is nine till ten on on the stock exchanges. So the the guys in the city do refer to I think it's dumb dumb money or loony hour. They've got all these names for it anyway. But it's basically where the, your average investors are doing their trades at nine in the morning or whatever um, because they've put their orders in overnight, and that's where they basically screw you really. Yeah, I'm not saying it's all bad, but it's it's not it's not a great hour. So if you're looking at trends within the um, you know indices and stuff, then um, the first hour is is where the trend might you know is kind of nonsense. It might be going in a completely different way. But anyway, we're now getting into day trading, and I don't want to do that. And we 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 like to trend follow. I just thought it was worth mentioning that you know the people do set the prices so that they make money okay and obviously there are fundamentals behind it which drive our technical patterns um but everyone's trying to get that money so you just have to be a bit aware of things you know do look different and i think that's why we've kind of been taught to you know look on the, on the bigger time scales really you know and I've, I've mentioned this with equities but i don't see why it wouldn't fit with forex i don't pretend to know how it works i mean forex is a much bigger market but it makes sense that the same thing would be going on in fx and commodities and all the rest of it so anyway, i'm going to shut up now i just thought that might be interesting to to some people uh yeah leave a comment have a look at my blog whatever um have a great day it's tuesday it's nearly 5 a.m time for work Woo.